welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast, brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines, coming to you from the West Coast. Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. We've got a little seven game slate to round out the work week for you guys tonight. In this one, we're taking a look at Minnesota playing host to the Dallas Mavericks. Cat is questionable. These teams just played a couple nights, uh, a couple games ago as well. So we'll take a look at some of the best bets as this one is shaping up. Uh, Nate does have his great article up on playpicks.com with some best bets and player props in there for you. And make sure to like and subscribe to that page. We've got a couple other videos up for you today. Actually, a bonus game video. So we'll have three game videos as well as that player props video that we will look to stay hot with you guys. Seven and three the last two nights with those. Uh, and also head to thelines.com. Make sure you're checking out that odds checker we have for you. Getting the best juice available on all those odds available to you out there. Uh, and as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find those listings in your area, such as what we've got for tonight. Nate, let's get into it. Yeah, three game videos on a seven game slate. That's a high percentage here for our viewers to give them some tips for everything. We got the Mavs right now are, are are actually climbing to plus three and a half, despite the fact that they beat the Wolves on Monday, and despite the fact that Carl Anthony Towns is 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 that legitimately questionable with that forearm injury that has limited him his last two outings, both losses for the Wolves. Uh, the other six games on the slate, we will break down Jazz minus three and a half at Hornets. Total is around 229 there. Uh, we're looking at the Wizards are plus three and a half in Detroit. The other game we will break down Warriors plus two and a half at Atlanta. The 221 total there. Knicks are plus seven at the Heat. Rockets minus three and a half at the Blazers in the Tankathon there. And then the Sixers, lastly, plus uh, uh, minus five and a half. At the Clippers, they stay in L.A. Dallas, I mean, apparently Luka's only going to miss one game with that ankle, so he should be back. They have their now three-headed monster with him, Dinwiddie, and Brunson creating and, um, you know, creating one of the most efficient offenses in the league, which is why we can no longer just bank on Dallas unders, right? Uh, Earlier in the season, it was because of their pace, they were never getting over they were keeping teams at a reasonable score, but now the pace still very, very slow, but they're just so efficient, especially in clutch situations. Um, and that's where you look at, look at here right away in terms of a three point spread. If they get into clutch time with Minnesota, um, they, they definitely have the advantage. They're eight and one in their last nine clutch time with a 46 net rating. Minnesota pretty solid as well in their last six, three and three. Uh, but their last three clutch games, they've gone one and two with a 15 net rating. And really, for me, it's about Carl Anthony Towns' his play kind of dropping off. Um, since that 60-point game, it's been declining a little slowly. But in the two games he's played through the questionable tag, has not been particularly effective on offense. And then on defense, he's been uh, almost a liability. He gave up 22 points to Dwight Powell on nearly perfect field goal shooting and then gave up 35 and 14 to DeAndre Ayton in that comeback win for the Suns. So the Wolves, you know, their cat is definitely the most important member of their big three. We've talked about how they need all three of the big three to win these kind of competitive games. They still, you know, have a bit of a misleading record since the all-star break seven and two with a great net rating. But again, four of those wins are against the Blazers and Thunder who are trying to lose the other, you know, four more wins in this hot stretch for them, not all at home. Uh, but they've, they've been against shorthanded teams that are missing at least one star. Dallas with Luka out there, they obviously have their star. Thing is, he's struggled against Minnesota really throughout his career. Um, I think people would like to know what they're doing to do to shut him down, or maybe it's just <laughs> something uh, about playing this particular team with the same tinted uniforms. But uh, 22 points per game, six and a half assists with 4.7 turnovers in nine career meetings, even worse in his last three, 16 points per game, 37% from the field, five and a half turnovers. Uh, but the Mavs are, are, are a full team now. I mean, with Dinwiddie, too, they've won four straight without Luka. Granted, all four of those games are against the Rockets and Kings. But they can still, you know, they still have a nice 115 offensive rating without Luka. Um, and obviously, he's, he's bound to bounce back there's bound to be some regression towards his his normal stats here against minnesota it's not like they're they have some sort of st- luca stopper out there uh it's just a bit of a sample size and in, in any case i mean i, I love just taking the, the mavs to beat to win high profile matchups 
um, especially when they're doubted. Now, their last 15 is underdogs. They've covered in 11 and won 10 of those straight up. They're 8-2 and two against the spread, their last 10 versus winning teams. And since January, you know, one of the hottest teams overall, 14-6 and six against the spread uh, since the start of January. So I'm riding with them and counting on the fact that Cat is either not healthy and going to keep playing through that but not be up to his usual standards – or that he's actually just going to sit and that if you get the Mavs plus 130, what they're at right now with the money line, you'll feel great when when the Wolves' best player sits. Yeah, I mean, I would love to kind of just bank on him sitting. Um, you know, I, I think if you're, you know, if you're if you're uh, watching the T-Wolves consistently right now, you, you see Cat not being Cat uh, to the extent that he was over the course of first, let's say, six, seven, eight games back from the All-Star break. Uh, but as you mentioned, four of those games were against the t- uh, the, the Portland Trailblazers and the Oklahoma City Thunder um, where, you know, they were playing super well. And then Cat gets that forearm injury and um, everything just sort of go, just collapses for them. They were actually um, in those first eight or nine games, once again, against bad teams. But in those games, they were defending the paint at an incredible rate. Um, that's dropped. They're still pretty good at it, but that's dropped considerably, which tells you, obviously, Cat is not able to bang down low. And when, when that's the first thing that you notice that rises a ton for them from the times that they're winning, uh, you know, over that eight, nine game stretch to the last uh, couple games that they have not been nearly as good. And granted, it's not fun to play against DeAndre Ayton uh, or the Mavs and then the Suns back to back by any means. But uh, Cat needs a rest at some point. Uh, and and the, the only reason that I think he, you know, that I'm not ready to just say he's out tonight. And I think the only reason he's still even considering considered available for this game is because they're playing the team that they're chasing to avoid that play in game. And they need to avoid that play in game. Um, if, if, you know, obviously it's, it's not going to be the, the hardest road, but they definitely don't want to play the clips. Um, and then they definitely, you know, it, playing the winner of the Pellies and Lakers, I'm not afraid of the Lakers, but I definitely, you know, don't want to play the Pelicans right now. They look incredible. Just smack the, the Bulls last night. Um, and they, they don't even have BI back yet. So my point is, is, is that the T-Wolves are trying to stay out of that situation um, and they're going to need to win tonight. So I could still see Cat playing, but to the points you've been making about how he's been struggling with, with that injury, um, I don't know that that helps them if he's playing at that point. Um, whereas if they could just put Nas Reed in there, they might have a little bit better chance, um, you know, going up against those uh, the, the front line of the Mavs. They will be missing Davis Bertans. It's not like he's done much for them in that front court. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the addition there, obviously, um, excuse me, of, of Powell coming back after he missed a few games. And like you've been mentioning, the, uh, as of late, he's been playing super, super well. So um, I think there's, a, there's a plenty to like for the under, to be honest, is kind of what I'm leaning. I'm with you on the Mavs at this point. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the Timberwolves offense without Cat. I mean, this season we know what they are without him. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, he, he, him being in there isn't obviously in, fully indicative of, of their two and five record that they have this season without him. Because if he is in there, obviously that negates that. But if he's in, if he's in there with, with an injured forearm, uh, it's, it's just as good as him, you know, being a, a liability at that point on defense. Um, and their, their offensive rating drops noticeably without him. And that's what you're missing mostly with him. Uh, you know, when he's, when he's injured at this point is you're missing that, that in and out, he is averaging about 24 points and eight and a half boards the last couple games against the Mavs. Um, so, you know, you definitely want that presence in there for, for you. Um, and as, as we know what, how bad the, the Timberwolves are when just one of their big three is missing, we talked about it last time as well, and still, still usable here, uh, as well, you know, so I, I think the, the other thing I would throw at you for that under that I do prefer tonight uh, at 228 and a half is, you know, on the road, it's Minnesota's defense is putrid uh, and their offense is wonderful. Their, their defense is awful. Their pace is like 105, hence a 27 and 10 record to the over on the road this season for the far and away, the highest cover percentage of overs. Um, but you look at them, uh, excuse me, that's on the road. You look at them at home, 17 and 20 to the over uh, because their defense goes way is way, way better at home. They slow down the pace by a couple possessions. Um, and then they also obviously play a, a little bit better, uh, a little bit worse offense on, at home, at least just because of the fact that they're not getting nearly as many possessions, not putting up as many points. So the seventh lowest percentage of cover of, of overs at home versus the highest percentage of overs far and away on the road. I think it's a little bit misleading to just think that 220, you know, that this team is just going to keep getting points, 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 um, especially when the Mavs are going to continue playing at the pace of about 93 or so yeah i mean i i totally agree with the the wolves home road splits lately it's been a bit a, a little bit more even in terms of them playing uh slightly better at home um offensively and not as poor defensively on the road um they have gone under now yeah in six of their last nine playing some pretty solid defense but most of those unders against really bad teams um I guess if you include the Lakers in that bunch, but yeah, went under with the Mavs last time out. 
these these teams split the home and home. The home team has won the last four meetings. They split the home and home in December. Luca was out for both of those games. Yeah. I mean, I think that to me confirms that the Mavs can play without Luca going off in this game. And yeah. if he does, you know, play at his usual standards and break this slump against the Wolves, then they're they're really uh, on you know going to be cooking with gas there. Um, it's really to me a question of whether which team you think should be favored here mm. because it's close to a pick'em line. And when the Mavs are favored on the road, they're twenty three and three this year. You know, Suns territory. Yeah, when is. the Wolves are underdogs in any situation, uh, they're about seven and nineteen, and e- even worse at home uh, as home dogs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, five and seven as home dogs straight up. Yeah, yeah. twelve and twenty two overall as underdogs. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it could quickly switch that direction if Cat is out and then the Mavs are favored. But they've shown an ability to win when they're underdogs anyway. Um, and, yeah, as you mentioned, it's a very important game for playoff seeding. Luka coming right back shows that the Mavs are treating it that way. Yeah. And I, I think they will, they'll be able to pull out the win. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, looking back on it, I mean, Luka was always going to sit that game against Houston when they had, when it was the game that split, the, you know, uh, their, their two games against the Timberwolves, right? It goes Timberwolves, Rockets, Timberwolves. It kind of made sense that if you're looking to beat the T-Wolves, Jay Kidd was going to sit Luka against a team that they did not need him against, uh, even though they were losing in the first half. Spencer Dinwiddie, as we call it, came through with 26 points and the W for plus 200 on your money if you were following player props that day um and yeah it, what you say about uh you know dallas being a favorite versus mini uh being um being the underdog i mean dallas has uh i believe in their last 10 games against winning teams they are eight and two against the spread love that they're an underdog here in a game that yeah minnesota is a winning team they're a good team um but i think they're they're comfortably in the bottom seven eight i think it's there's a bit pretty big jump uh in terms of the gap between you know dallas and mini is is, is a pretty big gap compared to you know dallas and, and the rest of the top six in the west who are all a lot more similarly uh, stable, uh, except for the Suns, who are far and away the best team in this league because they have a plus 50-something rate net rating in clutch time this year, which is why we love them and why we like Dallas tonight as well. So that is all the time we have for you in this one. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Check out all four videos we have up for you today, three game videos and that player props vid on a little seven-game Friday night slate to end the week with you guys. And until we see you next, happy betting.